Good morning and welcome to Kid News. I'm Kim. Today is Thursday, May 4th, 2023. And to our Star Wars fans, we say, may the 4th be with you. Topping our news this morning, another pandemic-related plunge reflected in the nation's report card. According to the New York Times, only 13% of 8th graders were deemed proficient in U.S. history and 22% in civics, a low that hasn't been seen since the 1990s. The declines are blamed on remote teaching and loss of instruction during the height of COVID. But according to Forbes, there are other issues at play as well, like a lack of priority placed on the subjects themselves. Among the test takers, less than 70% reported having a class focused on U.S. history at any time in grades K through 8, and less than half had taken a course specifically on civics. The 2022 report card also showed a drop in math and reading scores, and federal officials say they could be linked. A student who performs poorly in reading comprehension may have trouble reading and comprehending the questions on the history test. Your lawn, park, or playground could be the site of the next effort to reduce climate change. Power lawnmowers and leaf blowers that use small gasoline engines release a shockingly large amount of pollution. Environmentalists tell USA Today that using a commercial gas leaf blower for one hour produces emissions equal to driving from Denver to Los Angeles. That's why a growing number of cities and states are enacting limits or bans on this equipment, including California, Washington, D.C., Vancouver, British Columbia, and Burlington, Vermont. But replacing gas-powered equipment with electric or battery-powered alternatives is expensive, so people in many of these places can keep using their mowers and blowers for now until they're ready to buy a new device, and soon the only option will be one that produces less pollution. He just couldn't resist. A hungry Seoul National University student ate a banana at the Lemur Museum of Art. Not a big deal, except that the fruit was part of an Italian artist's installation worth over $100,000. The artwork, called Comedian, included a ripe banana taped to a wall. According to the Korea Herald, the art major who ate it said he hadn't eaten breakfast and was hungry and thought the banana peel he put back on the wall could be seen as a work of art itself. Fortunately for him, the banana in the exhibit is usually replaced every two or three days regardless, so the museum will not charge the student with any damages. In Kid News Sports Notes, a double win for the number 32 pick in the NFL draft last weekend. Joey Porter Jr. not only will be joining the Pittsburgh Steelers as a player, but also as the son of four-time Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champion Joey Porter Sr., who was drafted by the Steelers 24 years prior. When asked about the possibility of the Steelers selecting his son, the senior Porter said, You couldn't write this stuff in a storybook. Porter Jr. says he knows everything about the Steeler facility after growing up watching his dad and added, I'm just giddy going in there because I know it's my time to work. And San Diego Waves' Melanie Barcanas made history this weekend as the youngest ever to play in a National Women's Soccer League game. The 15-year-old forward took to the field against the Orlando Pride as a sub in the 72nd minute. Orlando was winning 3-1, which turned out to be the final score, but Melanie got a rousing ovation from the crowd. Coach Casey Stone told The Athletic she's still got a lot of lessons to learn, but I think she's going to be a player that people will want to come watch. Melanie was able to sign a three-year deal with the Wave in March due to the new NWSL rule that allows each team to have two under-18 players as long as a parent or guardian approves. That's it for Kid News. Now, today's Kid News quiz. America's eighth graders took a surprisingly big hit in which two subjects, according to the nation's report card? U.S. History and Civics. What football team drafted Joey Porter Jr. 24 years after drafting his father? The Pittsburgh Steelers. What was the name of the art installation a Sewell student nibbled for breakfast? Comedian. How old is the youngest soccer player to ever play in a National Women's Soccer League game? 15. 
In today's Kid News Kicker, as we mentioned at the top of the podcast, today is May 4th, and a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, it was unofficially declared Star Wars Day. It may have actually started in 1979 when the London Evening News printed May the Fourth Be With You to play on the famous Star Wars Jedi Master line May the Force Be With You after Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher took office. Or possibly a few months later when newspapers in the U.S. used the line in stories about the Fourth of July. Either way, roughly 45 years later, fans of the iconic franchise continue to celebrate May 4th with Star Wars-themed activities such as movie marathons and costume contests. Wondering how to respond when someone says, May the 4th be with you? You could say, and also with you. Or, May the Force be with us all. Both lines from Star Wars movies. The only line said in all Star Wars movies is, I have a bad feeling about this, according to Wikipedia. And apparently one should not try to celebrate Star Wars Day. As Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try. A big hello to our teachers and classrooms, Mrs. Hyens Tritons at Coronado Middle School in Coronado, California, Mr. Perkins Tigers at Hatch Elementary in Oak Park, Illinois, and Miss Strohmeyer's Nativity Stars at Nativity of Our Savior School in Portage, Indiana. Thanks for listening. May the 4th be with you, and we'll see you back here for more Kid News tomorrow morning. <laughs>